take my calendar down. Here we go. All righty then. Okay, so today I am reading Amelia Fidelia Sets Sail. I think it has just gotten so bright from, there we go. Amelia Fidelia Sets Sail. So I'm looking around, I'm seeing that this is actually book number seven. And I really like the cover, it's super cute. Uh, actually some glitter in the sea creature. It looks like a beach. I'm excited to see that she has a life preserver or a life jacket on, super safe, sunglasses. And she has bangs like mine, that makes me happy. <clears throat> Chapter one, cause way, cause why? Amelia Fidelia pinched herself. She was so excited. She felt as though she was levitating. They were on their way to the beach. She looked out the car window. She was sure that if she took a running jump across the bay, she could land in the soft beach sand and run the rest of the way to Aunt Mary's house. Amelia Fidelia adored her aunt. Aunt Mary always gave the best presents and was good to others and herself. She wore the most stylish clothes and hairdos. She loved jewelry, especially rings, and her nails were always polished, usually with really cool designs. And her son, Jason, was the best cousin ever. But as soon as Amelia Bedelia's dad drove on to the bridge that went out to the shore, their vacation came to a screeching halt. Bumper to bumper traffic, he said, slamming on the brakes. It looks like lots of people love the beach as much as we do, said Amelia Bedelia's mother. This is a long bridge, said Amelia Bedelia as they inched along. It's not that long, said her father. This bridge will take a long time to cross, she said, sighing. You know, this bridge is really a causeway, said her father. Cause why? asked Amelia Bedelia. Not why, said her father. Way, causeway. Cause it takes way too long, asked Amelia Bedelia. No, said her father, cause it's the only way to the beach. Amelia Bedelia's mother rolled her eyes and shook her head. Instead of taking his word for it, why don't you look it up in the dictionary? Because why? asked Amelia de Bedelia's father. Because you make stuff up at every turn, left and right, said Amelia Bedelia's mother. Mom, we can't turn left or right, said Amelia Bedelia, because we're stuck on this bridge. I mean, causeway, causeway. That's my daughter, said her father, glancing back at Amelia Bedelia in the rear view mirror. Then he reached over and patted Amelia Bedelia's mother. Maybe you should have married a no-nonsense engineer. I'm glad you didn't, Mom, said Amelia Bedelia. Even if Dad was an engineer, we'd still have to drive. The train doesn't go to the beach. Amelia Bedelia looked out at the bay. There were several small islands covered with trees. She spied with a cottage on one of the islands. Oh, she spied a cottage on one of the islands. Now that would be a relaxing place for a vacation, she thought. No bridge, no causeway. You could only get there by boat. You'd even have to go to the grocery store by boat. They rose higher and higher in the air as the car crept along. Finally, they were in the middle of the bridge part of the causeway. Boats passed under them. The traffic stopped again. Amelia Bedelia's father sighed and shut his eyes for a second. Bang! Who's honking at me? yelled Amelia Bedelia's father. 
Amelia Bedelia saw a fishing boat down below, motoring under the bridge. It was that boat, Dad, she said. Well, we're almost there, he said, steering off, steering the car off the causeway. Here at last, announced Amelia Bedelia's mother. Look at that. She pointed to a beautiful, small sailing ship on display at the town square. It was flying like a pirate flag. Do actual pirates vacation here? Asked Amelia Bedelia. Maybe in days gone by, said her mother, but not today. As they turned onto Beach Avenue, they each took in a long, deep breath of the salty air. People wearing swimsuits and shorts and flip-flops were walking along the sidewalks. There were kids eating ice cream cones and other kids with kites and boogie boards. If someone wanted to relax and to take it easy, this looked like the place to do that. Can we move here? asked Amelia Bedelia. It's so relaxing and... Suddenly, her father made a sharp turn into the driveway of a pale blue house. Gracious, said Amelia Bedelia's mother. Mary painted her house. Good thing you recognized it, honey. Before they could get out of the car, the screen door on the porch banged open. Amelia Bedelia's cousin Jason took a flying leaf off the top step and landed in the soft sand next to their car. He yanked the car door open and pulled Amelia Bedelia out of her seat. They began jumping and dancing around together in a wild circle until they both tripped and fell down laughing. Finally, Jason said. Putting his skull and crossbones ball cap back on his head. What, what took you so long? Aunt Mary came outside and hugged everyone. Welcome, she said. We should all be dancing in circles. The weather is going to be spectacular this week. Don't tell me that, said Amelia Bedelia's father. Turns out I have to drive home on Monday morning and work all week. But I'll be back next weekend. Then there's no time to lose, said Aunt Mary. Let's hit the beach. Amelia Bedelia started taking off her clothes right there in the driveway. Amelia Bedelia, said her father. What are you doing, said her mother. Don't worry, said Amelia Bedelia, whipping off her t-shirt. I'll be in my birthday suit in two seconds. Chapter two, happy birthday suit. Two seconds later, Amelia Bedelia's clothes lay in a heap at her feet, striking a pose she turned in a circle and sang out, Ta-da! Amelia Bedelia's parents and her Aunt Mary looked stunned. What are you guys distressing about? Asked Jason. She's wearing a bathing suit, duh. Amelia Bedelia was wearing a really pretty black and white bathing suit. The grown-ups breathed sighs of relief. I didn't want to waste any time changing said Amelia Bedelia, so I wore my suit under my clothes. Turning around to model it, she said, Remember, Aunt Mary, you sent it for my birthday. This is the first chance I've had to wear it. That's right, said Aunt Mary, laughing. That is one cute birthday suit, if I do say so myself. Amelia Bedelia was all set for the beach, but now her parents had to get ready. Let's get moving, said Amelia Bedelia's father. Where are my trunks? In the car, said Amelia Bedelia's mother. Your trunks are in the trunk. Aunt Mary showed them to their room so they could get changed. Jason took Amelia Bedelia to his room and gave her the bottom bunk. After she'd dumped her bag on the bed and admired the view of the beach out of the window, he said, Come on, I've got skim boards. No swimming until we get there, young lady, called Amelia Bedelia's mother, as Amelia Bedelia and Jason clattered out of the house. 
Amelia, Bedelia, and Jason each grabbed a board from the porch and raced over the grassy dune and down to the beach. Okay, Amelia, Bedelia, yelled Jason, start running. They began running side by side at the very edge of the waves where the water was super shallow and the sand was smooth and wet. Now, throw the board down in front of you, yelled Jason, then hop on. They both threw down their boards. Jason jumped on with both feet and skimmed along the beach. Amelia Bedelia hopped on her board with one foot. Thud! And then went, and then she went nowhere. Jason skimmed back to Amelia Bedelia. What happened? He asked. Just watch me and do what I do. She did, and this time she went skimming ahead of Jason. Woohoo! She yelled. Amelia Bedelia's parents appeared over the dune. Amelia Bedelia's father started sprinting toward the surf, yelling, last one is a rotten egg. Dashing right past Amelia Bedelia, he accidentally stepped on her skimboard and went whizzing toward a large wave. Yay! He bellowed, just barely balancing on the speck of a speeding board. He threw up his hands and shut his eyes as the board took a sharp turn, flying along the beach on the crest of the wave. He sailed into the air and crash landed on an enormous clump of soft seaweed, sunny side up. You are terrific, honey, said Amelia Bedelia's mother. Are you okay? I've never seen anything like it, said Aunt Mary except on the blooper shows. I've had enough ocean for today, said Amelia Bedelia's father. Good choice, said Amelia Bedelia. You're better off being a rotten egg than a scrambled one. Aunt Mary opened a giant umbrella and spread a beach blanket under it in the shade. Amelia Bedelia's father slumped down next to the cooler and sighed, at last! We're going to take a stroll and catch some rays, said Aunt Mary, as she and Amelia Bedelia's mother began walking toward the jetty. As long as they aren't stingrays, warned Amelia Bedelia's father. We'll be fine, said Aunt Mary. Stay here and catch some Z's. I'll join you in a jiffy, he said. Amelia Bedelia and Jason decided to follow their mothers. Amelia Bedelia actually wanted to stay and help her father. Catching Z's sounds like more fun. Can you surf too? Asked Amelia Bedelia as they walked along. There were some real surfers riding the bigger waves just off the beach. I don't have a surfboard, said Jason but we can always body surf. Amelia Bedelia shook her head. Maybe I could stand on your back and ride you, but I don't think you can stand on me. I'd sink. No, said Jason, skipping a rock across the water. People don't ride you like a surfboard. Your body is the board, but you ride the wave into the beach. I'll show you. Come on. Jason and Amelia Bedelia swam out to where the surfers sat astride their boards, bobbing on the swells and waiting for the perfect wave. When the next big wave came along, Jason started kicking and swimming ahead of it. Quick, start paddling, Amelia Bedelia, he yelled. Amelia Bedelia dove in front of the wave and swam with all her might. When the wave caught up to her, she pointed her toes behind her and stretched her arms out in front. She rode the wave all the way to the shore, to where her parents and Aunt Mary were standing in knee-deep water. Nice ride, sweetie, said Aunt Mary. You're a natural surfer girl. It must be the swimsuit, said Amelia Bedelia, laughing. 
Her father was focused on something in the water. He reached down and plucked an object from the bottom. My, my, what do we have here, he said. He was holding a large seashell, the kind sold in souvenir shops. He put it up to his ear. Well, I'll be, he said. It's true. I can hear the ocean. I hope so, said Amelia Bedelia's mother. You're standing in it. Amelia Bedelia's father held up one finger. Who? You want to speak to whom? He said, talking into the shell as though it were a telephone. She's right here. He handed the shell phone to Amelia Bedelia's mother. Honey, it's for you. Amelia Bedelia's mother rolled her eyes and held the shell to her ear. Hello, ocean, she said. Then a funny look came over her face. I hear something, but it isn't the ocean. Let me listen, said Amelia Bedelia. She held the shell against her ear and then threw it into the air, shrieking, Eek! Get it off! Get it off! Get it off! Gross! A baby hermit crab had latched onto Amelia Bedelia's earlobe. It hung there for a few seconds, dangling from one claw, then dropped back into the water. They all rushed over to make sure Amelia Bedelia was okay. Sorry, sweetie, said her father. I didn't know that shell was occupied. Here you go, said Jason, handing the shell back to Amelia Bedelia. You earned it. Now you won't have to go buy one in a souvenir shop. This is the safe shell, asked Amelia Bedelia. How did you get it back? I made a diving catch, said Jason. Next time I buy you a birthday suit, said Aunt Mary, I'll include crab earrings. Chapter 3, Rules of the Nautical Road. The sun had just peaked above the horizon. It was the crack of dawn. Come on, guys, said Amelia Bedelia's father. He was just standing in the doorway of Jason's room. We've got a date with a, with a chartered party boot. It's too early for a party, said Amelia Bedelia, burrowing her head under her pillow. Way too early, muttered Jason. This is a fish catching party, Amelia Bedelia's father said. The fish are hungry now and you're keeping them from their breakfast. We'll have a whale of a time, I promise. Ugh said Amelia Bedelia. She definitely did not want to catch a whale, but she knew better than to stand between her father and fun. And actually, she loved to fish too. She'd, want, she'd once won a bass fishing tournament with her fishing buddy, Audrey. They made it to the pier just in time. They raced past sailors lined up for the early bird special at the marina diner. They rushed past a woman wearing a big rubber overalls and boots and cutting up smaller fish to use for bait. As they boarded the real busy, their fishing vessel, there was a prolonged blast from the ship's horn. It was so loud that they all covered their ears. What was that for? asked Jason. For about five seconds, said Amelia Bedelia. Right you are, said a gruff voice behind them. It belonged to a man barely taller than Jason. He wore a dark blue baseball cap with a huge gold anchor on the front. Blasting the horn for four to six seconds lets everyone know we're leaving the pier. It's the rule of the road. We're not on a road, said Amelia Bedelia. We're on the water. There are nautical rules of the road, said the man. Ships have to obey traffic rules, just like cars. Otherwise, we'd run into each other left and right. You mean port and starboard, said Jason. Ahoy, matey, said the man. You're saltier than you look. Follow me and let's see what you know. Are we starting at the pointy end? 
asked Amelia Bedelia, pointing towards the front of the boat, where her dad was helping himself to a donut and cup of coffee. Bo, said the man. Amelia Bedelia faced him and bowed at the waist. Well done, he said, laughing, but the front of a ship is called the bow. The back is called the stern. On a ship, you walk forward to the bow or aft to the stern. Now let's head for the bridge. We're heading straight for it, said Amelia Bedelia. She pointed up at the bridge that her dad had called a causeway. It was the same one he'd driven over to get to the beach. Now they were about to cruise under it. They climbed a ladder and entered a room full of radar screens, computers, radios, knobs, and a big wheel. Morning, or morning, Captain Will, said the woman standing at the wheel. You're the captain, said Jason to their tour guide. Welcome to my bridge, said Captain Will. That's what we call the room where we pilot the ship. Have a seat, young lady. Amelia Padilla jumped up into the captain's chair. They were almost directly under the causeway bridge. Press that button for five seconds, said Captain Will, pointing at a button on the console. Bam! The horn echoed under the bridge. Wow! What rule was that for? asked Jason. No rule, said Captain Will, laughing. We do that just for fun. It wakes any drivers falling asleep behind the wheel on the bridge. Amelia Bedelia remembered her father's reaction when the exact same thing had happened to him. Just then, he appeared on the ship's bridge. I've been looking all over for you two, he said, brushing sugary crumbs from his windbreaker. I've been up to the pointy end and back to the rear. I've been looking for you left and right. Captain Will shook his head. Does this land lubber belong to one of you? He asked. Dad, this is Captain Will, said Amelia Bedelia. Welcome, sir, said Captain Will. After you catch some big ones, these kids can take you on a tour. They could teach you a few things. The real busy arrived at the fishing spot about an hour later. Captain Will positioned his ship above some wrecked boats and old train cars that had been sunk on purpose to give fish and other sea creatures a place to live. Amelia Bedelia and Jason cast their lines and hauled in fish after fish. Looks like we ran into a school of fish, said Amelia Bedelia's father. You'd think they'd learn how not to get caught, said Jason. Well... They didn't learn how to skunk us today, said Amelia Bedelia's father. Yucko, said Amelia Bedelia. She rose up on tiptoes to whisper in her father's ear. That's one thing I do know about boats, sweetie, he said. Proudly and loudly, the bathroom is called the head. A crew member who had overheard him smiled and pointed toward a door near the stern. If you see a sign that says, poop deck, don't do it, said her father as Amelia Bedelia headed aft. Jason burst out laughing and said, only pirate ships have poop decks. Amelia Bedelia blushed like crazy, wondering if her father thought it was his job to embarrass her every chance he got. As the real busy cruised back into the port, Amelia Bedelia sat with Jason and her father on the bow. It was a beautiful day, and they had plenty of fish to cook for dinner. But the breeze blowing through Amelia Bedelia's hair made her homesick for her dog. Finally, her dog loved sticking her head out of the car window into the wind finally would love the real busy's windy bow. For some reason, Amelia Bedelia blurted out, Bow! Wow, said her father. Wow, added Jason. Hearing 
Whoa, whoa, whoa! Made her miss finally even more. She was so busy feeling sad, she didn't notice that the real busy was passing under the causeway bridge. Bah! Blared the boat's horn. They all jumped, then started laughing. They laughed all the way back to the pier.